Once again, good evening and welcome to our Ring of Honor ceremony. I'm Wyatt Thompson, the voice of the Wildcats on behalf of Kansas State University Athletics. Welcome to the K-State Alumni Center and to tonight's festivities. Obviously, we're in for a very entertaining evening tonight, prior to tomorrow night's season opener as the Wildcats play host to South Dakota. To get us started this evening, a man who has been in charge of K-State Athletics since April of 2017, and in 2020 was named by Stadium the eighth best athletic director among all, all FBS programs. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome to the stage, K-State Athletic boss, our athletic director, Gene Taylor. Eighth, clearly I didn't pay enough people off because we could, <laughs> dang, kind of makes me mad. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, how about our Hall of Fame Wyatt Thompson guy, huh? How about that? Well, I told Colin I wouldn't speak more than about 45 minutes tonight because he doesn't have anything else to do. This guy is as tight as a cat on a tin, ro tin roof right now. I mean, he's walking in trying to be nice to his family, and he's like, I just, can I go back to the hotel? Come on, man. I, I won't be long. Anyway. On behalf of the athletic department, thank everybody for being here. This is obviously a very special night. I told Wyatt today when we were talking, I said, I, where my office is, I look out to the east side and I see the names of the Ring of Honor winners and the people who have been honored up there. And every day I kind of look up there and I go, wow, those are some impressive names and the impact that they've had on K-State football and, and who they are as individuals and what they mean, not only why they were here, but beyond when they left K-State and how much those names still ring true for the fans and how much I think about how difficult it is to get up there. And tonight we're gonna add some more to those names. Now we have to move over to the west side because the east side's full, but I, I, I just hope all of you that are going in understand how special it is because I just told El a minute ago, there's not a lot of names up there. And the names that are up there have had a major impact on our program. And it's a special, special deal. And for me to get to know some of you, I didn't ever get to see you play, but I know the impact you had here at K-State. And, and to see your names go up and be unveiled tomorrow, the addition of your names, you deserve to be there because you've had a major impact on K-State. And the coolest thing about it is our football players on our teams now are going to look up there and they're going to be inspired by your names and hopefully someday they can get up there by committing to K-State, doing it the K-State way, being the type of football players and individuals that you all are and someday there may be uh, their, their names up there. So congratulations to all of you, to your families. This is a tremendous honor. We're going to have a great weekend and thank everybody for being here and go Cats. Well, our next speaker is simply known as the architect of the greatest turnaround in the history of college football. You don't have to say a whole heck of a lot more than that. In 2015, he became one of just four coaches ever to be inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame as an active coach. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome five-time National Coach of the Year, the one and only Mr. Bill Snyder. I wrote that for Wyatt. <laughs> Listen, it's, it's wonderful, you know, to have all of you here, and what a great thing to honor these young people, you know, for all the special things that they have done in so many ways. You know, and I think back about the very, when we first started the Ring of Honor, and I recall we had 200 and I think we had 260 people in attendance. This, I believe, is as large a crowd as we've ever had uh, to honor, you know, some very special young people and their families and their coaches and the people that have helped them along the way. And they're all very, very special young men and I've been 
Uh, Larry, I, I say young man, I'm going to include you in, in that. I don't know where Larry is here, but there he is. Uh, but truly special. Uh, so anyway, I had, I had the good fortune of coaching five of the five of the six, and they truly are not just wonderful football players, but wonderful people. And I think that's the thing, and Larry's included in that, but I think the thing that, uh, that you all recognize, and I want the world to recognize, that's exactly what they are. You know, wonderful people, truly special. You know, and each of these young guys you know, and I, I call them young guys, and I know they're getting older every single year we do this, but uh, they are truly special, and to me, they are truly young, and they have done not only wonderful things as participants in the football program at Kansas State, but they have continued to be wonderful people in their lives once they left the university. All of them very, very special. I think we have, I think this will make 20 Ring of Honor inductees, which to me is, is really a very, very special honor. I can remember when we first started the Ring of Honor, you know, it was just in my way of thinking, we needed to do something to recognize so many special young people who have done so many special things, because you all get recognized. All the players get recognized while they're playing. And once they walk out the door, most people want to forget, move on to the next line. And to me, that didn't seem right. And it seemed like the, one of the ways of recognition was to be able to say, let's put their name where it will be seen constantly and throughout their lives. And that was the initiation of the Ring of Honor. And it's really been special. And to think back, you know, when you go back, we're talking about 20 years now, <clears throat> thereabouts, or more. Uh, and I think what we have, we have, uh, I think, 14 names up there right now, and we're adding six tonight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up and, if, with Gene's permission, get the lights turned on and get people working on putting those names up as quickly as we possibly can. But that's pretty special, but we're running out of space. So I encourage Gene, wherever you are, I encourage you, there you are, Gene, I encourage you to expand once again the stadium so we can. <laughs> so we can get some more names on there because there's a lot of deserving young guys. But they truly are special young people. And, and my congratulations to each of the young people receiving this recognition. And my congratulations to the people that have made such a difference in your life. You know, your families to begin with, your parents, your families, they are truly special, as are you. You think about the coaches that you have had, your position coaches that worked with you and helped develop you. You think about the Kansas State contingent, the fan base who has supported you so strongly throughout your careers. So many people here, Manhattan, Kansas, special, special place. When we left Kansas State, it was so easy to go to Florida, to California, all the nice spots in the world. This is the nicest spot in the world, Manhattan, Kansas. And you people, I, I think about the first time we did this, and you know, the 200 and 
some odd people when I think about this group and I see a full contingent. You know, and I look around and have walked around the room here and, you know, people that, that go back a long ways. You go back into, you know, the initiation of our tenure here, you know, whatever that was, 19, whatever. 18, whatever, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but, but you're still here. And you, because you still care. And that's the thing that I want all of you young people that are receiving this honor to understand that this community cares about you in such a dynamic way, in such a special way. And it's always here for you because you have been special. And, and truly indeed that you have. I appreciate the fact that, you know, each of these young guys, uh, you know, quality of character, so important. Some of them had to learn lessons, but they learned their lessons. And they created a life for themselves that is truly special. And I admire them so much for that. So, I've, again, this is not about me, this is about these young guys, and we want to get on with that. But I have to share my appreciation for each of you that are here, certainly the families. But those of you outside the family, I see so many young people that I are not young people anymore. Uh, I, <laughs> see, I see so many of you who are here because, because of the, because this is what it's all about. And you were here 20 years ago when it all started. And you're back again. And I appreciate that. And it's because you care. And I appreciate those of you that are here. I appreciate all of you young guys. I appreciate the families of the young guys that are being honored uh, because it was a t special, special time for you as well. Not just to see your child on the football field and see him get his education, but because of the sacrifices that you made to give him the opportunity to be here. Special people, grateful to you. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the evening and seeing these guys. Well, this next gentleman begins, hard to believe this, his fourth campaign as head football coach at Kansas State. His teams in his first three years have won 20 games. In three seasons to start a career, that's number one at Kansas State. He's also won 76% of his games as a head coach all time. Help me welcome to the stage our Wildcat boss, Mr. Chris Kleiman. Well, what a, what a night. Oops, a cup of water or something. You're going to need these later on, CK. Hydrate, baby. What a night and, uh, and what a weekend uh, here. Um, it's pretty cool for me. I grew up in Waterloo, Iowa, and um, I'll never forget going to football camps at the University of Iowa and um, having Coach Snyder uh, tutoring the quarterbacks. And uh, cool for me to see Del Miller, who came to my high school uh, band a long time ago. And uh, so it's, this is a lot of fun for me. And, and Larry, I know that coach didn't coach you, but Larry, I have at least three of your football cards. And when I had the thrill to call you in May and you picked up, uh, I had a big smile on my face and lit up pretty well because that was pretty cool for me. Because um, I remember watching you as a Redskin. I told you, I don't think I ever could tackle you though. <laughs> oh. Kind of to, to allude, allude to what coach talked about a little bit, we ended our staff meeting today um, and we have a staff meeting every Friday to kind of go over the game plan and, and everything. And I kind of finished it with, 
all the things going on in college athletics, and, and we all know what's going on in college athletics. Uh, but uh, I, I told the told the player, told the coaches, told the support staff, young young support staff in there, uh, student coaches to uh, older gentlemen uh, like myself and other coaches, and I said, guys, this is the best part of our game, is getting to game weekends, and enjoying the journey, and enjoying the time with these guys. Because whether there's a, a Ring of Honor person on there, um, whether there's a guy that's going to go on to be a doctor, go on to be an attorney, go on to be a school teacher, go on to be a firefighter, whatever it is, this is the greatest time to be a football coach. And I also said, guys, you guys that have not been to a game at Manhattan, a lot of former or a lot of new players on our team, 40 guys on this roster that are brand new. That's the that's the day and age of college football right now. I said, you're going to pinch yourself. It's going to be the best atmosphere you've ever, ever imagined in your life. And for some of you guys that have not been back for a while, that have come back, I'm so excited for you guys to run out of that tunnel and see the student section right behind that bench and see Dr. Trace's band, the pride, right there as well. And this place is going to be friggin' electric, guys. It is going to be electric, and uh, I can't wait for you to enjoy it with us. Um, I've said it's an honor to be the head football coach here at Kansas State, and the honor comes from the legacy and foundation that was established uh, by players like yourself and, and by Coach Snyder. We often talk to the team uh, about playing for the guy next to you and playing for the guy that, that uh, uh, laid the foundation for all of us and uh, put the power cat on uh, before us. And uh, we have the best in the best in the Big 12 because of what you guys have done and because of what Coach has done. And tonight is special because we get to honor uh, all of you guys and your families. Um, and in the program today, we talk about a standard. We talk about our four core values of discipline, commitment, toughness, to be selfless. We emphasize the 16 goals for success uh, that Coach has throughout the veneer uh, complex as well. And you guys exemplify that uh, on a daily basis. So congratulations. Uh, on your inductee into the ring of honor. Um, we're going to continue to make you proud and we're going to continue to write the legacy that is Kansas State football. And as I told the staff, and I'll tell the players tomorrow uh, morning in the pregame, got your back, CK, and I love you. Go catch. Well, up next is a man who came to Kansas State as a walk-on and ended up as an All-American. In one season, he had over 100 catches. He had a terrific pro career after leaving, 11 years, 10 with the Green Bay Packers and one with another team. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the pride of Riley County, Mr. Jordy Nelson. Um, just like to welcome everyone here tonight. Um, again, obviously a few years ago, I was able to be in some of these seats up here and it is a complete honor. And um, I get the honor tonight to um, welcome you guys into a special club. Um, it's unique. Um, it's something for me, I think I have a different pr perspective on it of growing up around here and coming to K-State games for so long that I remember when they put the names up there the first time watched some of you guys play for years, um, was able to be on a team with L and he won the Big 12 championship for us. Um, watched the next group come through and kind of get it back to where it was and carry on the legacy. But tonight, I want you guys to um, enjoy the moment. I think as a former player, we're always ready for the next game. We're ready for the next year. We don't want to talk about our stats. We don't want to talk about what we've done. It's all about the team, it's about the team. And I completely understand that. And we know without our teammates, we would not be here. I think every year that goes up there behind our names is part of us is with that. That team that was with us comes along with it. But I know for me, when I played, um, I always said when I'm done playing, I'll look back and enjoy it. Well, for the most part, there's one down here that's still hanging on. I don't know if Tyler's gonna keep going much longer, but he's still enjoying that part. But your college career is done. So look back tonight and enjoy the moment. Enjoy it for yourself because of the work that you guys put into this. 
enjoy it with your families because of the sacrifices they made uh, year in and year out, the support they gave you game in and game out, um, the miles they probably traveled every weekend to watch you play, the, um, all that stuff. It's, it's fun and to be able to sit here tonight, um, enjoy it. That's all I have for you. Welcome in. Um, enjoy the night and um, enjoy tomorrow too because like uh, coaches were saying, it, it, we all remember that atmosphere and it's, it, it will give you a rush again being on that field and then uh, seeing your names up there. So congratulations, welcome to the club and uh, I look forward to hearing all of your speeches. At this time, I would like to introduce three men who are members of the K-State Football Ring of Honor. From the inaugural class of 2002, Mr. Gary Spaney. From the class of 2008, Mark Semino. And that gentleman that was just on the stage from the 2015 class, Mr. Jordy Nelson. If you guys would all come forward. They are going to be a part of this ceremony in this way. These three standouts will be doing two ring presentations to each of tonight's current Ring of Honor members. So again, welcome them. Give them a nice round of applause. That's three great case statements. Our first inductee burst onto the national stage in 2011, and in 2012 led the Wildcats to a sensational season, one of the greatest in Wildcat history. Please enjoy this video of Loveland, Colorado product, quarterback Colin Klein. One of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play at K-State, Colin Klein was a two-time All-American and Heisman Trophy finalist who led the Wildcats to a Big 12 championship in 2012. Klein started his career at K-State in 2009 as a wide receiver before bursting out of the scene as a quarterback as a sophomore in 2010, rushing for 127 yards in a 39-14 win over Texas. In his first season as a full-time starter in 2011, Klein earned first-team All-Big 12 and honorable mention All-American honors after setting a Big 12 and FBS quarterback record with 27 rushing touchdowns, leading all FBS quarterbacks in rushing and setting a school record with 162 points scored. As a senior in 2012, Klein won the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award, earned second-team All-American honors, and was named Big 12 Offensive Player of the Year as he became the only quarterback from a Power 5 school to rush for at least 20 touchdowns and pass for at least 10 touchdowns in multiple seasons. In his two years as a starting quarterback, Klein averaged over 2,000 yards passing, 1,000 yards rushing, and 40 touchdowns per season. Klein left K-State with 21 school records, including 56 career rushing touchdowns by a quarterback, which ranks fifth all-time in FBS history. Klein gets the snap. Fakes to piece, runs right, he's at the five, he's in again. Another rushing touchdown for one of the best ever. Klein's senior season was capped off by K-State's second Big 12 championship, a number one ranking, and a trip to New York as one of three finalists for the Heisman Trophy. After a brief stint in professional football, Klein returned to K-State in 2017 as a coach and currently serves as the offensive coordinator for the Wildcats. Please come forward. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our latest Ring of Honor member, the wonderful Colin Klein. Thank you all so very much. Uh, Arthur told me he got his down to 45 minutes, so I think I'll be under that, which that's ironic too, because that would be more words than he said maybe than the three years we were together <laughs> playing here. Um, so uh, thank you so much, and, and uh, won't be able to, in, in this short time, be able to do everyone uh, that has really made this happen uh, justice. And, uh, you know, I appreciate Coach Kleiman and, and Kenny, you know, for uh, making this work to be able to, to, be able to thank and, and be here in person and uh, under awesome but uh, unique circumstances and, and uh, 
um, again, their, their support to this has, has been incredible. And, um, you know, first of all, it's, uh, I just have to thank the Lord, you know, and, and how uh, he brought me to K-State, um, you know, was only of his doing and, and how he worked and, and was there with me uh, through, the, through the lows and, and through the highs and, and, uh, and, and the relationships and, and bringing everyone here and, uh, you know, that, that was a part of it was, was uh, truly unbelievable and, and something that's really hard to put into words. Um, my wife, Shaylin, thank you. Uh, meeting her here was the uh, second best thing that's ever happened to me in my life. Uh, right after accepting Jesus and uh, Gary and Stacy, thank you so much for uh, raising an amazing daughter. And that's the second most important handoff that you've given to me, <laughs> uh, Gary. Uh, I don't want to be your thousandth tackle as a chief. <laughs> um, but truly, Shalen, being able to do this and have this part of our journey be part of our story and how the Lord did that is uh is nothing less than uh you know amazing and something i wouldn't wouldn't trade for the world uh, my family uh mom and dad uh thank you so so very much and uh just for how how you poured into me and how you poured into our family all those years and uh you know you, you try to summarize 18 years of, of work and and the two things that that truly stuck out to me that i wanted to thank you for more than anything that, that encompassed everything was uh, you know, you taught me how to fear the Lord and love his word and, and every other value and, and uh, character quality that, that you guys exemplified uh, comes from those two things. And, and truly, thank you. And dad, whether it was selling our house and moving into a duplex and starting life from scratch, you know, I was, I was watching. And I didn't totally understand the sacrifices you were making for our family. Um, I do now. And, and see and respect that uh, more than you know. And mom, uh, how you uh, took Kyle and I, uh, you know, and, and did our, our education and, and loved on us each and every day was, uh, was phenomenal. And, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. And, uh, you know, as a, as a young man, I probably mis misinterpreted demanding for impatient. <laughs> um, and uh, now as a parent, I understand just how patient you and dad were. Because <laughs> uh, uh, I think Shayla and I are going to put a mattress outside one of the windows because one of our three boys is going to make that trip by the time it's all said and done. <laughs> and, and Kyle, just, uh, you know, my best friend. We've done it all. We've done it together. And, and being able to have this part of, uh, again, that journey and, and uh, our story is, is again, uh, absolutely tremendous. And, and uh, memories and, and you know, that I, I wouldn't trade for anything. Uh, my teammates, uh, special people, you know, and, and Coach Snyder's right and, and Coach Kleiman's right. Our, our culture here and the type of people that have made this place what it is for a very, very long time is not something that uh, is easily quantified. And, uh, you know, whether it was the, uh, you know, the fun times in the locker room after practice, after a summer workout when you're spent and, and you got nothing left and, uh, you know, you're joking around, those times are, are precious. You know, when you're, uh, you know, you're in a ball game and I remember BJ down at Miami, we're down there and, and uh, you know, we're, uh, uh, shoot, on about the minus 20 and, uh, you know, it's a type one score ball game and, you know, all of a sudden, uh, <laughs> I can't get the football snapped to me, you know, and it's so loud down in that end zone. I'm yelling for the football and, and uh, you know, BJ couldn't hear me and our left tackle keeps jumping. We had three delay or three, three procedure penalties in a row. They are going the wrong way. And, and we're now second and 27 on about the minus four. And, you know, we end up getting out of that jam, but then we get to the sideline and BJ and I are talking, he's my roommate been in each other's wedding and all this stuff and I realized well he's a little hard of hearing in one ear I'm like we have to wait till we're on the minus four to figure that out <laughs> you know <laughs> and and our left tackle keeps jumping because he can hear me and BJ can't hear me and I'm just trying to get the football and coach Snyder's just over there you know calm completely monotone just man we're <laughs> we're screwing up a free lunch 
And, uh, you know, memories like that when you're in a jam, that th those are the stories that you remember and, and the relationships and, and times you got out, you know, the, uh, whether it's being down in a ball game and looking at each other, knowing that they have your back, you have their back is, is something that uh, th there's not another feeling like that, you know, and, and Tyler, how tough you were uh, to, you know, is, is so understated, you know, and what you did at Oklahoma State in 2011, being seriously hurt and still playing through that ball game was uh, nothing short of phenomenal. Arthur, you know, uh, having played with both you guys, I can't, I can't thank you enough for the memories, for the relationships, and, and uh, uh, truly I will treasure those forever. And, and being able to be a part of this class uh, with you guys a part of it is, is, uh, uh, is, is, is something that I can't even describe. So thank you guys. Um, thank the rest of the K-State family, so many people. I know uh, Jeff Smith, uh, Scott Eilert, Al Serby, I could go on and on and on, just Taylor Bratt, everyone that uh, made my experience here and, and helped uh, all the lessons and, and, and things that I was able to grow through, um, you know, and uh, was is something that I could, like I said, I'd be late to the, the team meal tomorrow morning if I went through each each one. And, uh, but, uh, you know, and then uh, Coach Miller, I, uh, I can't thank you enough. And, you know, how uh, you continued to believe in me when maybe I didn't even believe in myself. And, you know, saw something in there that, uh, you know, that I, that I didn't see or, or there were days that I questioned you never did, or at least you never showed me you did. <laughs> 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 and, uh, and your consistency and, and steadiness through that and, you know, seeing somebody that was contributing on special teams and, and had a dream and a vision to play quarterback and how you continue to pour into me and invest in me is uh, uh, something that I, I can't thank you enough for. And always keeping things in perspective, if there was ever a, a tough game or a tough situation going on in my life or yours, you would be vulnerable enough to share them and, and also keep things in perspective of, of what was truly important and, and why we're really here and everything in between. And, and I just, uh, I can't thank you enough. So thank you. Uh, Coach Snyder, you know, it's, it's hard to encapsulate the, uh, the, the scope uh, and all the things that uh, our program and this place has, has provided to uh, young men for, for so long. And when I was really, we had a loss for a long time, and, and Shailen saw my notes. Uh, this one was blank for a while because I, I didn't know how to uh, how to put it and how to thank you. Um, and and the only th the one thing that I kept coming back to was is how you really knew and, and always did know uh, uh, the the true secret of of what it meant and and what's most important. And and that truly is. Uh, the spirit that's in every young man and the competitive spirit and and the want to and drive to to fuel and to grow that competitive spirit to uh to serve those that you're around uh to make an impact and help those that are hurting or or struggling at, at, a, at a juncture to use that platform to maximize your god-given opportunity your god-given ability and how it was never about schematics, although we were going to be prepared. It was never about talent, which we were, or we were maybe not as talented as who we were playing or whatever it happened to be. But it was about truly understanding how can I stoke that fire in my competitive spirit to do more, to give more, not to give a darn what anyone else outside or inside thinks we or I can or cannot accomplish and, and have that edge that will grow and grow and grow if stoked. And everyone has that in them. You believe that. You never, you never uh, doubted that in, in any one of us. And, and how you were able to stoke that and grow that through the course of what we do here as football players and, and football coaches is, is something that I cannot, uh, I cannot thank you enough for. And, and there's, uh, I just thank you. Thank you. Uh, to all the past uh, 
Ring of Honor members and, and past great players at Kansas State, thank you. Because you did inspire us and inspired me to look up there. And I remember Jamie Mendez talking to us when we went down and played UCLA. And I remember, you know, uh, different junctures, you guys pouring back into us and, and showing and, and giving us the legacy of, of what Kansas State has been and, and what we strive and, and want to be. Uh, you know, and, and what our mission is in, in the landscape of college football and the landscape of our culture and, and young men. And, and I can't thank you guys enough for giving us such great examples of, and, and, and of who we wanted to strive to be. So thank you. Um, excited for tomorrow. Um, our, our young guys have, have done an unbelievable job preparing. Um, I'm so grateful and, and honored to, to be able to serve them and, and try to, again, continue on um, the legacy that is Kansas State football and of impacting people, of uh, pushing them and, and, and growing young men into uh, competitive warriors in life uh, and, and in football. And uh, thank you guys so much. Thank you for everyone that's coming to town, for my family and and uh, excited to spend some time with you guys. And uh, go Cats. How about a big hand for BJ, Kyle, and Coach Miller? They deserve it. Give them a nice round of applause. Our second inductee started his football career as a high schooler in the great football city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. From there, two years at Dodge City, and then two years with our Wildcats. Please turn your attention to the video screen now as we look at a gentleman who was an incredible blocker and running back and an MVP in the NFL, Mr. Larry Brown. Overcoming an injury and sharing the workload with featured tailbacks Cornelius Davis and Mac Heron, Larry Brown played running back for the Wildcats in 1967 and 1968. While his career would take off after K-State of the professional ranks, as a member of Vince Gibson's first two teams, Brown ran for nearly 680 yards over two seasons and averaged over four yards per carry despite playing one entire season with a broken hand. Taken in the eighth round of his 1969 NFL Draft by Washington, Brown played eight seasons in the nation's capital, rushing for nearly 5,900 yards over his career. An immediate impact player, Brown was named to the Pro Bowl in each of his first four seasons, named All-Pro three times, and named the 1972 NFL MVP and Offensive Player of the Year as Washington appeared in Super Bowl VII. Over his career, Brown became the first Washington player to rush for 1,000 yards in a season, doing so twice led the NFL in rushing yards per game two separate times, and led the league in total yards from scrimmage in 1972. Brown remains today as the third all-time leading rusher in Washington history with 5,875 yards and his fourth all-time with 35 rushing touchdowns. Our newest Ring of Honor member, Mr. Larry Brown. Thank you. First, I would like to recognize my daughter, who takes care of me now, Lauren. <laughs> Secondly, I'd like to recognize a gentleman who is probably the toughest linebacker I ever ran into, Willie Lanier, Kansas, formerly Kansas City Chiefs. And finally, I'd like to recognize my roommate, not my teammate, my roommate and teammate,
my roommate and my teammate. <laughs> He's taking a picture of me, right? <laughs> John Walker. <laughs> Fellow Wildcats, thank you so much for the honor of inducting me into the K-State football's ring of honor. I am especially pleased to join my former quarterback, Lynn Dickey, in being so recognized. I also want to congratulate my fellow members of the Ring of Honor class of 2022, Arthur Brown, Darren Howard, Colin Klein, Tyler Lockett, and L. Robertson. It says something about this strength, about the strength of K-State football that we all signed pro contracts and four of us wind up playing in the NFL. I'm proud to tell you that I played the first game in what is now Bill Snyder Family Stadium in 1968. We whipped Colorado State 21-0 to move into the Associated Press Top 20 for the first time. We won three more games that season than we had the years before. And although I had played a lot of fullback, I led the team in rushing yards. It's hard to believe that it was 54 years ago. My two years at Manhattan as a student athlete were very, very special. They helped me mature greatly as a football player and as a man. I had left my hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for Dodge City Junior College at the age of 17, I left Kansas State as a NFL draft pick headed toward my 22nd birthday. When I never told Coach Vince Gibson, nor his assistants of my team, uh, nor my teammates, was that I was deaf in right, my right ear. I was too proud to admit that until Washington coach Vince Lombardi sent me to get my hearing tested when I was frequently late off the ball during my rookie training camp. In eighth, as an eighth round pick, I not only made the team, I led Washington in rushing as we had our first winning season since 1995. Two years later, after Coach Lombardi's premature death from cancer, I powered the Redskins to the playoffs for the first time in 26 years. In the year after, I was voted the NFL Most Valuable Player, and we made, this, made it to the Super Bowl. I was 5 feet 11. 195 pounds, which was particular, wasn't particularly big for a running back, even a half a century ago. Longtime NFL head coach and offensive coordinator Ted Marchabroda called me pound for pound the toughest guy I've ever seen. But after the 1976 season, my toughness was overcome by ailing knees that wouldn't let me run with the same char hard charging style that I was accustomed to. I retired as Washington's all time rushing leader. I retired as, as Washington's all time rushing leader, and we had made the, we made the playoffs five times in six years, establishing a powerhouse that would last for two decades. At that point, 
Only Jim Brown, Tony Dorsett, Franco Harris, Walter Payton, O.J. Simpson, Gail Sayers had averaged more yards of offense than my 1,045 yards per year and 82 yards per game. I keep hoping that one day I join those six men in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I would truly appreciate your support. <laughs> After my retirement, I began a long and very successful business career in Washington, in the Washington area. Neither did that nor my NFL stardom would have happened if I hadn't spent two years right here in Manhattan. So I want to say again, thank you K -State, to, to, to K-State for this tremendous honor. I'll always be, I've always had purple pride. Go Cats. Thank you. Well, our third inductee of the night is a man from St. Petersburg, Florida, who simply stated, was probably one of the most dominant and disruptive defensive ends ever to play at Kansas State. And as you all know, we've had a lot of good ones. During his time in the Little Apple, the Cats were 42 and seven. Here's our feature, look to the video boards now for Darren Howard. An All-American and two-time first-team All-Big 12 selection, Darren Howard was a star defensive end for the Wildcats from 1996 through 1999. As a sophomore in 1997, Howard finished third of the Big 12 with 11 sacks and 18 tackle for losses and led the conference in fumble recoveries. In 1998, Howard led the league with 10 and a half sacks, registering seven and a half of those over the final five games of the season to lead the Wildcats to a number one ranking and an undefeated regular season. As a senior, Howard earned third team All-American honors after again leading the Wildcats in tackle for losses, culminating in earning Holiday Bowl defensive MVP honors when he garnered nine tackles, five for losses, and three sacks in King State's 24-20 win over Washington. High formation by Tui Asasopo, straight back in the pocket. Howard on the rush, brings him down. Darren Howard's second sack of the game for K-State. Howard still holds the K-State school record for career sacks with 29 and a half, forced fumbles with nine, and a second all-time in tackle for losses with 54. And he's the only player in school history to post a pair of double-digit sack seasons. Howard was taken in the second round of the 2000 NFL Draft by New Orleans and went on to play 10 seasons in the NFL, registering 67 career sacks and three seasons of 10 sacks or more, including 11 in his first season, an all-NFL rookie campaign with the Saints. Ladies and gentlemen, our latest Ring of Honor member, Darren Howard. Wow. Um, first, and get this out the way, I want to thank my wife for getting everybody here. You know, it's a tall task. You know, I want to give a shout out to my, my big boy, my firstborn, Avery. My, uh, my golden child, Matai, and uh, my little challenge over there, <laughs> Noble. And um, so, you know, they, they came into my life later in my career, so this is very new. They don't have the experience of um, even seeing any of this. So this is, this is very big for me and very important for me to have them here. This is like the last hurrah kind of kind of thing to where they can be involved. So I'm excited for uh, this evening. I'm excited for this honor. Uh, definitely excited for the game tomorrow. Um, man, 
I mean, this, it's titled correctly, like the Ring of Honor. It's, it's, it's truly an honor. Um, you know, back in those times, we, we put our heads down and we worked and we worked and worked and to no end. You know, there was no real goal. We just worked hard to be as, as good as we possibly could. And um, some of my best memories came from being in this school and being a part of this community and going to bowl games and seeing 20, 30, 40,000 fans in, a, in an away stadium, man. Like, you can't replicate that anywhere else in this country. So, a very special place, very special school, very special teammates. Um, one of my favorite teammates is here, Mark Simino. We came in together, we left together. And um, so, five years, I got to get on his nerves and uh, <laughs> I want to do more of that. So, um, I do want to thank uh, my father in law is here. He made the trip from, Calif from uh, North Carolina. <laughs> He's a, he, he's a handful. But, um, <laughs> and my, uh, my, my wonderful mother is here, Cynthia Johnson, um, single mother, raised me by herself. And you know, one thing I, I love about her is that you know, anything I had interest in, she made sure I haven't had an avenue to get there to do it. And um, no matter what it was, what sport it was, what activity it was, um, she was always willing to bend things to make things happen. And except for one time. <laughs> it was one time I wanted, um, I wanted to be a drummer. I wanted to get drums. And about a week and a half later, she came in the house with a, a trombone. <laughs> and, I, and I played that thing for you know, a couple months just to appease the situation, but it's not what I wanted. But either, either way, she did what she could at the time. <laughs> Right? It's all she, music, he wants music, I give him music. So, but um, my, brother, my mother is a very special woman and um, she's done a lot and she's still doing a lot um, for our family in my life and I just wanna thank her and make sure she knows that I love her very much and I'm very appreciative of everything you've ever done for me in my life. <clears throat> um, I had notes and I left them on my phone on the table. Um, Coach Snyder, my guy. <laughs> Coach Snyder, um, like a lot of guys, gave me an opportunity. You know, skinny kid coming out of St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, his coaching staff, his, uh, his recruiting guys, they saw something in the raw football footage that they saw of me and invited me to come up. Oh, thank you, son. <laughs> invited me to come to Kansas State and then and it's kind of two part because that invitation had to come and I had to accept the invitation and those two parts coming together collectively made the best decision that I think I've ever made in my life to come into Manhattan Kansas um, it set the trajectory for the rest of my life my professional career and um, you know to cap that off with the legacy play of being enshrined on a stadium is like you you can't you can't picture that you can't dream it you know it's it's just something that comes along the way way down the line after you've put all your work in and um can't you, you don't do it by yourself i talked about mark but the team that we had was so talented we were deep at every position our coaching staff was excellent Coach Snyder put those guys together and, you know, his coaching tree is miles and miles ahead of anybody else's coaching tree in college football. So obviously the guy, the guy knows what he's doing, right? We all know that, right? So I also want to thank Coach Snyder for being who he is and how he is on a consistent basis. There's no moving this man off his spot. And um, I really, as an adult, came to appreciate that. It's hard, to, it's hard to when you're 18 and 19, you don't know life, right? But standing on the spot, knowing who you are, um, and seeing that thing through, through thick and thin, no matter what, what happens, what comes at you, I think is um, a very, very valuable lesson to, um, to teach young guys. And without saying it, by example, he's done that. Um, so give it up, Coach Snyder. Um, <laughs> Last, uh, lastly, just real quick, I just wanted to, uh, because 
you know, um, my family is my everything, my kids, my wife are my everything, and um, I just want them to know that um, just like my mom did for me, you know, I am here, I'm available, anything that you guys want to do, think you want to do, and may be wrong about, um, I'm here for you, and I love you, and you put your head down, and you work hard at it, that anything is possible. Absolutely anything is possible. It's not just a saying, it's a real thing. It's a real thing. So um, that's all I got. Uh, again, thank everybody for coming out. Thank you, Coach Snyder. Thank you to my family, K-State family. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you very much. Congrats. Our next inductee came to K-State from Lee High School in Baytown, Texas back in 2000. He and his teams won 39 games in four years, including 11 wins three times. Now to the video of a terrific quarterback and a really good man, Mr. L. Roberson. The quarterback who led K-State to their first ever Big 12 championship, L. Roberson, played for the Wildcats from 2000 to 2003, starting at the position his last three seasons. After earning honorable mention all Big 12 honors in 2001, Roberson began to showcase his talents in 2002 as he became the eighth Wildcat to total more than 4,000 yards of total offense in a season, including being the first quarterback to ever rush for over 1,000 yards in a season en route to all Big 12 honors. His school record total of 1,032 yards was highlighted by a school record 228 yards on 29 carries, with three scores and a 49-13 thrashing of Nebraska. A turn option to the near side, L keeps it himself, steps inside, touchdown, Kansas State, Al Roberson slips in there for five yards out of the catch, or on the board. After being named MVP of the Holiday Bowl in 2002, Roberson used that as a launching pad for a memorable senior season in 2003 that saw him be the only quarterback in the nation to pass for more than 2,000 yards and rush for over 950 yards. He ranked third in the nation in points responsible for at 18.31 and set a K-State career mark for total offense, touchdowns responsible for, rushing touchdowns, and passing touchdowns. As he got in the Wildcats to a six-game winning streak to end the regular season, including an unforgettable 38-9 win at 18th-ranked Nebraska, Roberson forever etched his name in Wildcat history with his Big 12 championship game record four touchdowns and a 35-7 romp over number one Oklahoma. The fourth touchdown pass of the night for L. Roberson, Kansas State champions of the Big 12. Named an honorable mention All-American, Roberson left K-State with 10 school records and as the first player in Big 12 history to throw for over 5,000 yards and rush for over 2,000 yards in his career. Welcome to the Ring of Honor, L. Roberson. Mama, we made it. <laughs> uh, first off, I want to start by uh, actually uh, thanking a lot of people. Um, so this may take a little while, but I definitely have to reach out to all the family that came out uh, to support me today. Um, uh, it's been a long journey for me. Um, uh, I'll start um, uh, with my mom, Alice. Um, you know, she, she's been a rock, uh, not only to me, but my brother, my sister, and, uh, and family, um, and, and just kept us together, uh, raised us uh, uh, just to be uh, good kids, um, and, and really um, installed in us to, if you want it, uh, you, can, you can do it and just put yourself to it and, and, and achieve it. Um, and I had a younger brother, he's, he's not here today, but you know, he was the one that followed me behind everywhere I went, wanted to be a part of everything. And I was like, no, you're too little, go back in the house. You know, but my mom was the one that, you know, 
said, no, take him with you. If you want to go, he goes with you. You know, and I didn't real, I didn't see how much it meant to me uh, at the time because I was a kid. But you know, just to see how he elevated, made it to the NFL, and did the things that he did, and it was all because um, he followed me. You know, and um, he's learned a lot of things from from me. Um, and you know, whenever I'm down, um, you know, that's a lady I call. You know, my mom and. Regardless of what, you know, she could be mad at me one day, you know, I know that I can just call her and make her laugh and, and, and everything's okay. And just I know that you have that person in your life, um, it beats everything. And, and mom, just thank you for, for being that lady for me. Uh, to my dad uh, and my stepmom, uh, Shani, um, that I, I really appreciate everything that you've done. Shani, I've really appreciated the the grandmother you've been to my kids, and not only to my kids, but to your kids as well. You don't treat them any different. Uh, whenever you do something, you know, mine are a part of it too. And you know, Dad, you've always been that person that's just been there to that I can call when I'm going through it, and 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 you give me the the words of wisdom. Uh, he's he's. I've never met a man that can cry as much as this guy can right here. <laughs> It's like, Dad, I'm the one that's going through something. Not, <laughs> but son, if you just pray and you just put God first, it's like, babe, he's preaching again, you know. But, but it's it's like I said, it's it's good to have those people in your life that you know that you can call and get the things um, that can deal with all of the different situations uh, that you go through. And, and those are the two um, that I know I can call for the different situations that I deal with on a day-to-day -day basis or a weekly, monthly basis, and, and they have my back. And, 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 and it's, that's never changed um, uh, at any way, form, or fashion. Um, also to my fiance, Veronica, wave your hand, babe. That's my baby. All right. That's another rock. Like I said, I got a lot of rocks in my family to keep me. Anybody that knows me know I need a lot of rocks in my family. Jeff, you know, that was my prayer warrior right there back when I was in school. He always, hell, let me pray for you. You know, and a lot of times you don't understand, you know, like Howard said, you 16, 17 years old, you see Jeff, you may want to go the other way. But it was just some about that guy that just made you just want to be a part of it and, and listen and just pour your heart out to him because he was going to say the right things, you know, put it into a situation as to where you may not understand it right then, but when you stop and you think about it, it all made sense. Um, uh, so I appreciate that, uh, you for that and, and everything that you've done uh, from a standpoint of what you did uh, for us you know and I think every um, student athlete um, will remember you by that you know a person that they could always go through go to and you know and know that you would always put God first you know and, and not push God but also be able to you know give it to us in a way to where God was always present in the conversation you know but you humbled it down or you let me say, dumb it, dumbed it down to where we can say, oh, okay, I get it. You know, I get it. So I appreciate you for that. Um, to my coach, uh, for those that don't know that white haired guy right there, uh, Coach Dick Olin, it's where it all started. Um, it, it's literally where the foundation started. I was a little snotty nosed kid in junior high, you know, just learning to play football, didn't know too much about nothing. And um, he saw something in me, you know, and, and I wanted to play safety. I wanted to play defensive end. My whole outlook in football was try to play as many positions that you can so you stay on the field, you know. But, but he saw a quarterback in me that I didn't see in myself, and, and, and he pushed me. He, you know, he was one of the guys that, you know, when I didn't have the funds to go and do things, to go to, like, big Houston Oilers camps, you know, he made a way for me, you know. I, I tell the story all the time, you know, um, I didn't know too much about football, but he took me to Houston, you know, and I'll never forget this story. And I actually shared it with him outside. It was like, 
the, the best day of my life uh, as a youth in high school and just prepared me for the high school was, you know, he took me to a place and had my shoulder pads tried out and they were maroon, like our colors, maroon and white. And, and it, was, it was, you know, I've, I had never been given anything by anyone outside of my family, you know, so meaningful to me, you know, and it was like, I know I wanted to play football, you know, I mean, and I come from a situation as to where when we played little league football, how we got our uniforms was we would go to the junior highs and when they would throw away the old uniforms and the old jerseys, we would be there to jump in the trash cans to grab them and say, oh, I got a new helmet, I got a new shoulder pad, you know, so for him to, to have that belief, belief in me and to, and to, you know, show me the way and, you know, it was rough, yeah, he'll, he'll attest, it was many times he put the second string quarterback in just to show me that, hey, your spot could be taken, so don't take it lightly. Um, and, and, I, and, I, and I, you know, I was able to win a lot with him and he really set the foundation for me to go on to the, uh, the next level. Uh, to my daughters, uh, Brooklyn and Zanel, you know, notice I don't have any boys, so, <sighs> babe, I don't know. Brinks is enough though. We got a little Frenchy, so you know we'll make that work. I, I dress him up, I throw footballs, he runs down the hall and he gives me that satisfaction. But you know, these two girls, they've really been uh, a joy uh, to me. You know, uh, like I said, my life has been learn on the fly. You know, I've been put in situations, I've put myself in situations as to where they may not have been the best situations, uh, you know, but uh, like I said, you know, my mom, my dad, you know, my family, they've always say, and you know, God bless my grandma. If you know her, uh, she, was, she was another rock in my family. And she always told me that, you know, God will never put nothing in front of you that you can't handle. And everything that God has put in front of me, I've been able to learn from it. And it has gotten me right here to where I can say, hey, I'm in a ring of honor at K-State is because through all of the stuff that I've went through in life, I must have did something right to be recognized um, as with this elite group, you know. And, and I can sit back and I can say when I came into K-State, you know, watching the guys like Darren, I mean, uh, Darren Howard, you know, he, I was a redshirt freshman and he was massive to me. I mean, you look at him now and he's done, kind of shrunk, I don't know what he's doing, eating. His, his wife's feeding him, uh, he's juicing, I guess. That's what they call it, juicing. He looks like a juicer or whatever. I was like, is that Darren? Is that? Oh, that is Darren. You know, but he's, he's looking good. You're looking good, bro. You're looking good. You know, and um, Mark Semino, you know, one of the best to ever do it. And unfortunate for me, as a redshirt freshman, as you know, you come in, you have to play what? Scout team. <laughs> I had to go against him on scout team. Now, I'm a little snotty-nosed freshman coming in, having to go against the likes of these two to prepare for a game. Not one Ring of Honor player. That, that's what I had to deal with. But it prepared me for the years to come. But you know, I thank you guys for, for what you've done. Mar I still say Mark Seminole is the hardest hitter that I've ever personally felt because in practice, I didn't want no part of no quarterback sneak or anything like that. When it was time to go against a quarterback that was a running quarterback, I didn't want to do it. And I'll let you know, I didn't want to do it, you know, because that defense that year was, was outstanding. And it, it, it goes to show that not only one, multiple of those guys are being inducted uh, with such a short amount of people uh, in this. So uh, my hat goes off to you. Uh, to all of the, the other guys, I, I can get along with that. <laughs> Tell the story too, my daughter got mad at me because uh, the other day I was down and, with Mr. Klein here and he, he blessed me to allow me to talk to the quarterbacks and when I finished communicating with them and kind of talking to them and telling them the things that I think that they, you know, would help them to, to better themselves was just to compete and not only compete 
in the game but compete in practice. And and one of the things uh, me and my quarterback, Jeff Schwinn, and the guys that I came up with, you know, we competed for like lunch or, you know, for a dollar, you know, who who's going to throw the most completed passes or who's going to do this and that. And I kind of told them that as well. And when I got to the to the sideline where my daughter was and she was like, and my, my uh, fiance had told me, she's like, yep, he was over there talking again. He said, then Brooklyn said, I could tell they were getting tired because you seen one of them messing with their hair, the other one fixing their helmets. So like now, when I start talking, I can, you know, I just, you know, I got such a passion, you know, for sports. You know, I've lived it all my life and, you know, I can be in any other position, but if you want to talk football, you know, when, when I'm at work, when I am at work, you know, don't come to my office unless you're talking sports. I don't care if it's tennis, hockey, rugby, whatever it is, we talking sports and a one hour conversation can go on to 20. Um, but that's on another note. But I just want to thank s some other people that came uh, this long way. Uh, Jeff, he actually, Jeff actually came in to K-State with me. Uh, he was one of our trainers and um, uh, he's actually the son of Coach Olin uh, and, and him and another uh, one of my fellow um, players in high school actually came in uh, with me um, and, and he's, he's been there for me uh, through high school, watching me grow and, and also having my back at K-State, you know, always good to have someone from home to be able to, to reach out to. And Jeff was always that person that gave me everything I need. Uh, to the Slappies, uh, Larry and Donna, you know, those were um, two good family friends. And, you know, you always had that K-State family. And after every game, I was able to, you know, go to their house. You know, they always had food, drinks. Uh, pool, you know, uh, rooms for us to stay and, you know, to keep us out of the streets and the things like that. I mean, I mean, I appreciate you guys for uh, what you've done uh, for me and continuing to do. We're actually having breakfast at his house uh, tomorrow before the game. Uh, and, and he's called me 20 times to make sure that we are coming. So <laughs> we will be there and we will be ready to eat tomorrow morning. Uh, to my other K-State family, uh, the Sean Browns. Um, Keitra, uh, raise your hand, let everybody see you. This girl right here, uh, she was special to me. You know, uh, when you talk about an angel that comes into your life uh, from nowhere, uh, that was my angel. Um, she really loved me for, not that I was just a K-State quarterback, you know, she loved me for me and I knew it. Um, and she was that sister that I had out here and, and would do anything for me. You know, it could be three o'clock in the morning, you know, if I'm hungry, you know, or if I needed a rub or anything like that because I'm aching because of games or whatever. She was always there for me to rub me down or, you know, just to cook something for me, you know. So she, thank you for getting me through a lot of tough seasons, a lot of tough games and, and being there for me. And, and I'll never forget you. Uh, and you'll always be my sister, as you already know. Uh, to the mom and dad, Jeff and Vita, you know, you've raised a great daughter and, you know, you don't get many people uh, in your life that, that does the things that they do and that she does and, and, and really having an everlasting uh, life to you. And I appreciate it. All right, so done with that. All right, K-State stuff. Um, uh, breaking down Kansas State for me is, is, is simple, you know. Um, when I came here, um, I really, what got me here was going back to that, that team, the Michael Bishop team where they had the great players, the, you know, and number one in the nation. And I remember myself going to the San Antonio game and just being a part of that. And I didn't know anything about college. I didn't know where I wanted to go. I didn't even know if anybody was, was looking at me. But being in that atmosphere in San Antonio, even though we uh, lost that game, I mean, Kent State lost that game, but it was just something about, there was a difference. And, and I'll put it like this, if you take how I watch and I'm very observant of things. And I watched A&M, how they came out on the field. I watched A&M, how they interacted with each other. And then you have K-State. 
you know. When they came out on the field, everybody was together. Um, when they ran through they, their drills, you know, they just had a sense of, I don't know how to put it, but it was, it was just something that you wanted to be a part of. You know, and I had options to go a lot of different places, but when I visited Kansas State, I was able to talk to Coach Snyder. I, you know, uh, Michael Smith was, you know, the recruit who recruited me here. And just being around the area, you know, it reminded me so much of home, meaning that the Little Apple was a lot like Baytown to me. And, and when I say that, it was everybody knew everybody. It was a small town. And football was the engine that made it go, you know. And when you look back at Baytown, that was the same atmosphere I had there. Um, you know, football made our city go. So um, I, I had a talk with my coach, Coach Olin. I had a talk with uh, Snyder. He actually came to the house and sat down with my grandma, my mom, and you know, and it just made the right, it just seemed right for me uh, to, to, to come here. And, and when you look over the time, and I, I was out there talking to a lot of the different people, and we go through games and we reminisce, it just makes it all right that, that I made the, the perfect decision to come here and, and be a part of this. And, and be a part of it with you guys. And, and, and I wouldn't change anything for the world uh, with how it happened and, and, and where I'm at right now due to it. And I just wanted to let you all know that I appreciate all of you for coming out. I uh, appreciate all of the things that you do, Kenny, uh, Mary, for going hard uh, with making this all possible. And, and, and I, I'm just you know at all. At, at, at this, you know, when when Snyder called me, he called me twice. Coach Snyder never calls me twice. <laughs> so I'm in a meeting and I'm like, okay, okay, I'll call him back when I get out the meeting. Rings again. I'm like, oh, what's going on? You know, and, you, and everybody know we don't get two calls in a row from Coach Snyder. Nobody gets two calls from Coach Snyder. And, you know, and he told me and, you know, and he and he said that, you know, that, that we're going to put you uh, into the ring of honor, you know, your, your career, you know, the things that you've done for Kansas State. It, it really touched me to the point to where, you know, I, I felt like um, it was it was uh, it needed to be done. And, you know, and I just wanted to be a part of this family for the rest of my life. And and now when I look into that stadium, you know, because I was always the ones that when I went to a stadium, that was like the first thing I looked at when I went into a stadium, the names in the stadium to let, you, and that kind of was let me know, okay, this team, this school is serious, or, you know, they had some athletes. But now to have my name up there, you know, for my kids to be able to see it, you know, I, I want to thank Kansas State, uh, Coach Schneider, you know, the whole family for giving me my roses while I'm alive, you know. A lot of people uh, don't get that. You know, a lot of people, once you're gone, you get all of the accolades of, of what you've done. You see it on day to day TV and everything. You know, once a person's gone, you know, that's when they get the praise. But I, I want to thank K State, the family, friends, and everybody for doing that to me, just giving me my roses while I'm alive and allowing me to enjoy um, all of the things that I've done uh, here and for my family to see it and, and, and Snyder. I appreciate everything that you've done for me. Um, I know I haven't been the easiest. You know, I know we've went through a lot, you know, but, but I always known that you've had, you know, that you saw something in me and, 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 and you really wanted me to be that, the best player that I could be. And, and I appreciate you for that. And I think, um, you know, uh, hopefully when you look at me now and you look at my family and you look uh, at where I came from when I was a little kid coming in. Uh, I hope you can be proud that, that, um, that I'm on the right track. Um, Coach Dale, I'll close with Coach Dale because, um, you know, I got the honor to, you know, have a year with Coach Dale and, um, and Klein put it in, in all of the words that he could be. This guy, you know, he just let me be me, you know, and, and, and he, and he told me when he got here, he said, L, I'm not gonna try to change you. You know, uh, you've been doing this. You know, all I wanna do is just help you, you know, maximize your potential your senior year. And, 
And I think um, by you saying that and, and by you allowing me to, to build that trust in you, I think I had one of the best senior years I could have ever had. And, 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 and you played a major, major part in that. And I appreciate you and your family. And, and we still talk with your family and everything. And I appreciate you for that. But for everybody that came here, thanks. I'm not going to say anything else. But, but you know, uh, once this is over, um, if you can't, everybody in here, at least hug one of the inductees here, OK? Walk out of here and hug at least one of us before you leave. Because I'm a firm believer touching love Spreading the love is, is, is needed, you know, because we live in a crazy world. Crazy things go on, but, you know, uh, just touch, touch us, hug us, grab us, or whatever you have to do uh, before you leave here. But because we need that love, and this love will continue to carry on uh, for the future to come. And, co and great, I, we need to extend it. We got a lot of guys, okay, a lot of good athletes. I'm just happy to be one of them. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, our fifth of six inductees tonight finished off his college career with two super seasons here in the Little Apple. His senior season was highlighted by a championship and an All-American designation, a product of Wichita East High School. Let's take a look at the Wildcat career of Arthur Brown. A two-time All-American for the Wildcats, Arthur Brown anchored a Big 12 championship defense and made immediate impact as a two-year player in 2011 and 2012. Named first team All Big 12 and the conference newcomer of the year in 2011, Brown led the Wildcats in tackles and tackle for losses in his first season. One of the most memorable performances by a Wildcat defender were his late interception and sack of eventual Heisman Trophy winner Robert Griffin III and a 36-35 win upset over number 15 Baylor. Griffin wants to throw, intercepted by Arthur Brown at the 20 to the 15 yard line. Oh my goodness, what a play by the brilliant Arthur Brown. As a senior, Brown earned first team All-American honors while also being named the Big 12 Defensive Player of the Year, the fourth Wildcat to ever earn the award. Among his standout games were his performance at number 17 West Virginia, where he was the first player to intercept Geno Smith after his record-setting start of the season without throwing an interception, part of a 55-14 beatdown by the then number four Wildcats on national television. Brown's team-leading 100 tackles helped the Wildcats win their second Big 12 championship, earning a number one ranking in the BCS and finishing with 11 wins for the seventh time in school history. Brown was a second-round selection in the 2013 NFL Draft by the Baltimore Ravens and went on to play four seasons in the NFL. Welcome to the Ring of Honor, Arthur Brown. I thank everybody for being here. As Colin mentioned, I'm known to be a man of many words, so <laughs> I'll do my best to be brief and, and direct. Um, first of all, I'd like to you know, give honor to my parents who, who are with me today. Um, I believe that this honor is truly a testament to who they are and the decisions that they they made you know throughout the course of their life to to get me in a position of where I am today both me and my brother so I'd like to take a moment to to give thanks and honor to to both my parents Arthur Senior and Leilani Brown you know, so, so much of of where I am and who I am is based on the foundation that they laid. And throughout the course of my career, many people are responsible for laying bricks on that foundation. Um, as a young man, like, a, like, like was mentioned, I'm, I'm from Wichita, Kansas. Um, I made a decision to take a trip to Miami, Florida, coming out of high school. And, you know, two seasons in, found my way back, back to Kansas, faced with the decision. Um, do I return to Miami or do I stay home? So I was um, encouraged and took the advice of my father to consider Kansas State as an option. And I'm glad I did. Um, that moment, that time that I shared 
here that 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 weekend. Um, I was adopted into what was a a family um, that provided me with the structure and discipline I needed to 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 redirect me into the um, get to what I really wanted to get coming out of high school, and that was to play professional ball. So I want to thank Kansas State. I want to thank Bill Snyder for the program and the system that he put in place that allowed so many of us to achieve um, such great careers. Thank you, Coach. In addition to that, I don't want to leave out my brother, uh, Bryce. He's, he's been traveling this journey, taking this quest with me from the beginning. Um, coincidentally, he is coaching his first college career game versus KU tonight. Um, he's coaching at Tennessee Tech as a running back coach. So um, I like to take time to acknowledge him. Um, so much of what I did when I was younger was to set, a, set an example, um, to, be, to be an example to him. And I can truly say that at this time in his, his life, he's become a shining example to me. He has two, two sons and a beautiful wife, so you know, he's somebody that I look up to and the way that he's grown and matured throughout his, throughout his life and throughout his career, I definitely want to take time to acknowledge that as well. And to my K-State family, there's, there's so many of you who, who had an impact and influence on, on my life and my career. Um, you know, there's two guys that, that, are, that joined me today, Tyler Lockett and Colin Klein. Um, had many, many great moments, um, building, building a legacy, building a, adding and investing into the rich, rich history that we have here at Kansas State. Um, those guys really, really allowed me to, to grow and they exemplified what it meant to, to be, be a Wildcat. So I want to take this time to thank them independently um, Colin Klein and Tyler Lockett. And also the rest of the inductees, um, those, those men who, who came before us, um, thank you for, for all that you, you've done and for the investment that you've made into this program. You know, like I said, it's truly an honor to be in the company of, of so many great men. And um, it's something that I will cherish and honor for the rest of my life. I'll share this with uh, my future children and um, hopefully one day that they can uh, follow in the footsteps of so many who came before them. All right, so thank you guys. Our final inductee this evening followed his father and uncle to star status during his time as a Wildcat receiver from 2011 through 2014. An example, in 2014, he had 106 catches. He was also during his career a two-time Big 12 Special Teams Player of the Year. Back to the video screens as we take a look at the brilliant career of Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett was a consensus All-American who continued a family legacy while also earning consideration as the best wide receiver to ever don a uniform at K-State in his own right. Starring from the get-go as a freshman in 2011, Lockett earned first-team All-American honors as a kick returner after setting the Big 12 single-season record for kickoff return average and becoming the first player in K-State history to return a kickoff for a touchdown in consecutive games. Lockett's in, touchdown K-State! 99 yards for Tyler Lockett. As a sophomore in 2012, Lockett earned honorable mention All-American and first-team All-Big 12 honors as he took on more of a leading role in the offense, highlighted by his 194-yard receiving day at West Virginia and a nationally televised 55-14 Wildcat win. Lockett led the Big 12 in receiving yards and all-purpose yards per game as a junior in 2013 earning second-team All-American honors while posting the second-most receiving yards and receptions in the season in school history. As a senior, Lockett was named first-team All-American by six different publications as he again led the league in receiving yards and all-purpose yards, 
and was named Big 12 Special Teams Player of the Year for the second straight season. Lockett left K-State with 15 school records, including being K-State's all-time leader in receptions with 249, receiving yards with 3,710, and receiving touchdowns with 29. No pressure, fires deep for Lockett. Touchdown on the dive! Tyler Lockett with the catch for Kansas State. Lockett was a third round draft choice of the Seattle Seahawks in 2015 and earned all pro honors each of his first three seasons in the NFL. He is a three time member of the NFL Top 100 and enters his eighth season in the NFL this fall, leading just 44 catches in 500 yards to move into third place on the all time Seattle reception and receiving yard career chart. Ladies and gentlemen, Tyler Lockett. I know everybody's ready to go. <laughs> um, man, it's truly a blessing just to be standing up here. Um, I'm really thankful of this opportunity, even just to be able to come here uh, if I could start off with a funny story, just coming to Kansas State, there was a lot of firsts. Um, first time I ever stepped on the field at practice, uh, Colin threw me a fade and I dropped it. I was like, this is going to be a long career. <laughs> <laughs> then, you know, my mom, my mom and dad ended up buying me a car, and first time I got pulled over. <laughs> first time I got a ticket. Lights were like, he said, wrong lights. So I'm like, I got my hazard lights on, just don't give me a ticket. First time I went to court. <laughs> Coach Snyder's son, Sean, we came up with a game plan. I went in there, nothing happened like it was supposed to. I said guilty, he was about the thing. I said, nope, not guilty. <laughs> first time I changed my answer, first time I had to learn how to talk to a judge. <laughs> <laughs> But in, but in all seriousness, um, no, before I even start, Coach Snyder said we all look older. I look older in that than I do right now. <laughs> you know, so I thought, I thought at the end of the day, I thought I was going to, you know, maybe have a chance to be up here when I was done playing because I'd be able to reflect over my whole entire career. And, you know, that wasn't the case. I'm still playing. And so even though I'm still young and I'm still playing, my body feels like I'm 55. So... <laughs> So I guess that's a good reason to say, imagine me being 55 and standing up here today saying how thankful I am to be up here. But now, in all seriousness, um, we all kind of know how my career ended um, here at Kansas State. We know um, a lot of the records and, and the games and the plays that I had the chance to be able to make with amazing players, with amazing quarterbacks, um, phenomenal coaches. I think one of the things that I'm reminded of when I'm standing up here is a lot of the things that a lot of people don't know about. So my dad obviously wanted me to red shirt. That wasn't the case. And when I was out there and I was practicing, I was doing really good. And they called him, said, hey, man, he's not going to red shirt. And so, you know, I had a fit. I was like, I should have just messed up the whole time I was here so I could be able to red shirt. And we played, I want to say, was it Eastern Washington or Eastern Kentucky? Eastern Kentucky. And the first time I went out there, they said, and now Tyler Lockett. And everybody went crazy. And I was like, oh gosh, this is... <laughs> Caught my first pass on the little arrow route. Everybody started screaming and I was like, I made it. Like, <laughs> like I am here. They put me at punt return. I caught the punt return, started like maneuvering around people. I got tackled and fumbled. First time I said I was down, first time I lied. <laughs> <laughs> I still think I was down, but I ended up fumbling. Uh, second game, you know, I was like, okay, I got my feet wet. Second game, we played Kent State. I was really, really nervous and anxious. Colin threw me the ball on the first play of the game. I ran a five and in. It was one of those plays. I dropped it. If you don't know, if you have a bad play when you first start, you know how the game is going to go for the most part, unless you, you change it. Then they punted it to me, and I muffed it. If you don't know what muff means, I dropped it. <laughs> And then I had to pick it back up. And so then Smitty grabbed me and was like, what are you doing? If you don't know who Smitty is, it's Michael Smith. 
He, so he was my receiver coach. So he was like, what are you doing, man? At that moment, I remember I went back to the dorms. I had to stay at Haymaker. I know now they stay at Jardine. Like, wow. <laughs> like, it's, it's just crazy. Before I even go to where I was going, it's just crazy what they get nowadays. Like, <laughs> like, like I am happy for all these athletes. They get NIL deals, all that. But if NIL deals was when we was playing, I would be living next to Coach Snyder. <laughs> Man. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. And so, um, okay. Now, back to where I was. So after the Kent State game, I go back to Haymaker. I'm sitting there. I'm upset. I'm mad. I called my mom. Um, I was like, man, I'm leaving. She was like, what you mean? I said, man, this legacy stuff ain't for me. I said, for I said, forget this legacy. Like, everybody kept saying, hey, he got the speed of his uncle, the hands of his dad. I'm like, I can't even come here and be me. I, I can't even go to class. If I, don't, if, I go, if I miss class, somebody calls my dad. If I'm in Aggieville, somebody calls my dad. I have no choice. I got to get A's and B's. I can't even get C's and D's, and I call those chasing dreams. Man. But anyways, I remember I called my mom. I said, I'm, I'm over this. I'm done. I was like, I'm going to Tulsa, like back where home at TU and all this stuff. And I remember wa I walked. I usually walked a lot here. I walked from Haymaker all the way to the football facility. And I was just praying one day. And I was just like, God, like, why is this happening? And I remember this story about the disciples walking and they saw this man that was born blind. And they asked, like, Jesus, hey, is, why was this man born blind? Like, did he sin or did his parents sin? And he was like, this was done so that the glory of God may be revealed. And so it like made so much sense to me at the time. And I was like, wow. And so what came to me when I was walking was everybody got to see your first two games. They talked about your dad. They talked about your uncle. They put you in the middle. So everybody's expecting you to be this type of player that everybody was able to see both of them be. And those first two games happened to show them that you're nothing like them. Like, those first two games happened because everything that was going to happen after that was going to be shown the glory of God over my life. And so that's the whole reason I even wanted to play the game of football was just to prove to people God was real and to show them that by my lifestyle. And I remember when I was in high school, I had told this lady that she said, what do you want to do with your life? I said, I just want to prove to people God is real. And she said, you got to have a job. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm standing up here today, so... <laughs> But, but yeah, like, I just remember, um, now I got to remember where I'm back at. I'm, I'm doing so many sidetrack things and stuff. But um, I remember when that happened, like, the whole course of my life changed. We played against Miami that third game, and Tremaine was supposed to be in a boundary, and we ran out there, and he was like, you go here, you go here. And Colin threw me my first touchdown. And after that, like, everything went crazy, and I remember – my dad was hoping I redshirted, and as the season went further and further along, we got the Texas Tech, and one of the players got hurt, and so I ended up starting for the first time. And my uncle used to always say, your time is going to come. It's going to come. We played Texas Tech. I ended up, like, catching a couple passes. I think I caught the first pass of the game. And then um, one of the players, David Garrett, um, rest in peace, he um, – he was tired. We played Texas Tech. They go 70-some plays, if you don't know. Fast, no huddle, all that. So he was tired. They threw me in there at kickoff return. And that's the one that you saw when we played against Texas Tech. I ran it back. And then they was like, stay back there. And so I ended up staying back there. And then we played KU. I ran it back. And then after that, everything else was history. And even though it turned into a, a phenomenal freshman year and I ended up winning All-American and all that, it ended against Oklahoma State where I lacerated my kidney. And I didn't even know I lacerated my kidney. And so I was still out there playing and they kicked, they kicked it off to me and I almost ran it back with a lacerated kidney. And so I remember just being in the hospital, just sitting there, just, you know, my dad was sitting there like, probably was crying. I don't know if y'all ever seen him cry before. Like, I, don't, I ain't never seen him cry before, but I'm just gonna say he probably cried. And so it was just like, wow, like we literally sat there and he wanted me to red shirt and it didn't look right at first, 
But then when you look at the end of that freshman year, you see how everything changed. And so as I, as I continued to play throughout the course of my career here, I'm reminded of my senior year where we played against Auburn. And man, I was so ready to play against them. When I tell you I was so ready, I was too ready. And it got to the point where I was like, this is where you show them who you really are. Like they were so caught up in all these other receivers. Like you don't get any credit at K-State. Um, like you don't. Even in Seattle, <laughs> if you don't believe it, look at my career. You get no credit. But I love it because when I first got here, it was all about the underdog status. But I remember when we played Auburn, they threw me a slant. I dropped it and I just put my, my hands on my head like this, not knowing it was still up in the air and it got intercepted. And I remember at, after that game, I went home and I told myself, I said, I told myself, I said, either that can make you or break you. And I wasn't going to let it break me. And the way that I seen myself finish out the course of that career, my senior year, it was really amazing to watch even for me because a lot of people don't understand, I didn't do any summer practices. And if you don't believe it, the coaches hate that. <laughs> they, do, they want you to practice. But I had surgery on my shoulder. I missed, I missed all summer workouts. Coach Schneider and them still had to make me, I still had to run a 43. You don't know what a 43 is. We had the conditioning test, 60, back, 60, back, 60. Had to make it in 43 seconds. That sucked. <laughs> I had two weeks to prepare and I did it. Then I, my hamstring was hurting. Hamstring was hurting the first couple of games of the season. I still went out there and I still played. Moral of the story, I guess, is that on the other side of fear and on the other side of anxiety, on the other side of not even knowing what to expect, you never know what's on the other side that's waiting for you. I think for me, I stand here today never even thinking in my life I would be up here in the ring of honor. All I did was just prepare myself for the next opponent. I went against so many great DBs, whether it's my junior year, my senior year, and the last thing I wanted to do was embarrass myself. And so I just rose to the occasion. I stood up to the challenge and I did whatever was necessary to make sure that I prepared myself, whether it was staying out there and catching jugs, whether it was um, even going to class. I, I only like going to class to see the people. <laughs> like, I didn't care too much about the class, <laughs> the teachers, <laughs> but, but overall, like, now when I look back and I reflect over the course of my career just being here, like, first off, I don't know how I did it because coming here and your dad was a phenomenal receiver that did all this crazy stuff and still does amazing stuff here. And then my uncle come in here and he leaves the same way. And then I had to come here. It was a lot of pressure. But I think my faith helped me learn how not to worry about that. And I had the opportunity to create my own path, to create my own journey. And so the last thing that I just want to leave each and every one of you with is as we all stand up here, inductees to the new Ring of Honor, I want each and every one of y'all to know that y'all are also in the Ring of Honor too. It may not be up there with Kansas State players who've played in a football stadium, but you guys are in the Ring of Honor when it comes to your families. And I'm not just talking about the inductees, but I'm talking about the people in here who are looking at me too. Somebody loves y'all and somebody honors y'all in their hearts, whether it's your kids, whether it's your parents, whether it's your friends, each and every one of y'all means something to somebody. And so I just want each and every one of y'all to know that. And for everybody that's inducted and for each and every person that's in here, put your own self in your own ring of honor because you deserve it. And we live in a, we live in a world where we have to learn how to celebrate ourselves because sometimes we don't get the opportunity to be celebrated. And so I'm thankful to be here, to be celebrated. I have amazing family and friends, um, everybody over here on my dad's side, amazing people. Y'all need to really be thanking John Lockett. If he ain't have Kevin, who's my dad, and Aaron, who's my uncle, I ain't standing up here today. <laughs> so, 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 stand up, stand up. <laughs> So I'm just really thankful for, um, for everybody coming out here. You know, um, my girl Lauren, she right there, she just chilling. She, she doesn't really know much about the Kansas State history, but she's going to learn Ema. <laughs> she's going to learn every man a wildcat. And so I'm just really thankful. Um, um, and yeah, man, I hope my mom and great grandma and aunt could come up here. 
Um, there's some things that's going on, so hopefully they could be able to make it here tomorrow. But I'm really thankful just to be able to share this moment with each and every one of you and each and every one of y'all that are here today, just being able to celebrate me. Um, I hope that means y'all invite me to some more games. <laughs> like, like I want to be a broadcaster. I want to do a lot of different things. But no, nah, truly, I thank each and every one of you, and congrats to each and every person that's inducted in here. I love y'all. Ema. I just have to do this. Would you step up onto the stage, Mary? I just want all of you to know how much work this young lady has done for the last several months to pull this off. Mary Gorman. Thank you. Lots and lots of work, phone calls, emails. We appreciate your efforts so much. Arthur Brown, Larry Brown, Darren Howard. Colin Klein, Tyler Lockett, and L. Roberson are now in the ring of honor at Kansas State football. Congratulations all. Good night. Go Cats. We'll see you tomorrow.